All right, so as we were reviewing, category two is when two separate nucleophilic atoms attack, and that completely pushes the original carbonyl oxygen off. And in the examples we're gonna to see today, I think it's gonna leave as water. Uh, many of these are reversible, so here's where it's really helpful to keep asterisk in the former carbonyl carbon, because that acts like a hidden carbonyl. One point to mention is, it's important to, to phrase this correctly, we're gonna have two separate nucleophilic atoms attack, but not necessarily two separate nucleophilic molecules. That is, it's perfectly possible that these two nucleophiles could be in the same molecule. For example, it's possible that they could have already been connected at the beginning, and then they would still be connected over here. That's actually a very important type of variation that you're pretty sure to see. Um, so um, we're saying two separate nucleophilic atoms are attacking, and they may or may not be coming from the same molecule. We saw that how that's how you can uh, protect uh, carbonyl. Exactly, that's right. Um, it, although they don't, uh, they don't have to be coming from the same molecule to provide protection. That's just a conventional way to do it. Um, you could, because uh, you can protect it either if they're from the same molecule or two separate ones. It just turns out to be conventional or convenient to have them in the same molecule. That is uh, what we'll see in a, in a second. I think you might have already seen this. This is a typical molecule that's used, so we'll get to that in a moment. And the reason why those are good protecting groups is because the reaction is reversible. And when you're done protecting it, you can go back to the carbonyl. And we'll go through all those details uh, right now. All right. So let's go through our key example. So now we have to go through uh, the mechanism here. This is, um, I think this is the most complicated mechanism in the course, or this and the reverse reaction are the most complicated mechanisms of the course, but they're definitely tested and important, so we, we need to take our time to make sure we understand this. All right, so uh, any uh, guesses about what might happen first year? Um, I was first gonna say pronation. Sounds good. So. How would that work? Uh, probably this O would steal it from this H. That's right. Now we know that this is a strong acid, and we learned last term that if you start with a strong acid, it's got to start by giving its proton to somebody. Um, some people might have thought it would protonate this oxygen, and maybe sometimes it will, but that doesn't give us the interesting product. The interesting product comes from focusing on when the carbonyl oxygen gets protonated. I thought of that, but then right. like, it would this just wouldn't, fall off yeah. and then wouldn't help. Yeah, it doesn't give us any interesting products if we protonate this oxygen. So we want to focus on protonating the carbonyl oxygen. Let's actually, let, let's actually follow this in the, the handout because this is so important or so complicated. So here we are on category two, two nucleophilic attacks by separate atoms. We're going to go through the acid catalyzed. Uh, oh, well, it's got to be acid catalyzed. Um, the nucleophile here is ROH, which is an alcohol. Um, and notice that we're going to go through both the forward reaction in the left-hand column and the reverse reaction in the right-hand column. So we're still on page one of the handout, category two at the bottom. So uh, our starting material is an aldehyde ketone. Um, actually, before we go through that, let's, let's separate here. What, what are the main things that have to happen? There's three main things that have to happen. First? The pi bond needs to break. Mm -hmm. And then the nucleophile attack. And then... Those will happen simultaneously, so we'll call that one thing. Oh, okay. And then, since we have to do it twice, you're going to have to make the water or hydroxide leave. Right. And then Good. once it does that, the nucleophile will attack again. Oh, that's right. That, that's exactly right. Those are the three things. So the three main things are the first nucleophile has to attack while breaking the pi bond. Then the oxygen has to leave. And only then will the second nucleophile attack. Those are the three main things. The reason why this reaction is so complicated is that interspersed with all of those are many protonations and deprotonations. And that's what people find very confusing, and that's what the handout is supposed to help us with, seeing when we protonate people and when we unprotonate people. So that's what we have to look at carefully. But the, main, the three main things are very simple. First nucleophile attacks while the pi bond breaks, then the oxygen leaves, then the nucleophile joins. So we can see that on the handout. 
Here's the first main reaction. Nucleophile attacks the carbonyl carbon, breaking the pi bond to the carbonyl oxygen. And down here, here's the, the two other main things. The carbonyl oxygen leaves, and the second nucleophile attacks. The thing that makes it complicated is all the stuff in parentheses, which is protonations and deprotonations. There's one, two, three, four protonations or deprotonations, and that's what makes things complicated. So I put those in parentheses so we don't just, so we don't confuse those with the main parts of the reaction. But of course, all of those we have to get right to get the mechanism right. Okay, well, the first protonation, as we can see from the handout, and as you actually figured out, is that the carbonyl oxygen gains a proton from our acids. Let's show the mechanism for that. Let's see if you have it already. structure of sulfuric acid to, uh, to write the mechanism well there. So that's good as well. Okay, so we've shown this oxygen protonating. So that's our first step. All right, now going back to the handout, now that we've done the protonation, we're ready for our first main step, which is when the nucleophile attacks the carbonyl carbon, breaking the pi bond. Now, in the handout, I just keep saying NU for nucleophile, and it's our job to substitute who the nucleophilic atom is. Who is the nucleophilic atom in this problem? Control oxygen. Yeah, the alcohol oxygen. So now we're going to use that to attack. So now we can show that part of the mechanism. good that you remember the charge here. Again, that's another lesson from last term. The charge is the most important part. This oxygen has lost its charge because it's at the, because it started positive and it's at the final head. But this oxygen is gaining a charge because it's at the initial tail and it started neutral. And let's start getting into this habit of putting in our asterisks again here. So I'll put in these asterisks. I think that's especially useful here to remind us that this used to be the carbonyl oxygen, even though it doesn't look like an oxygen anymore. Not this one. This is not the one that used to be the carbonyl oxygen. This came in from the alcohol. By the way, what was the purpose of the acid then? To protonate. Um, but why does that help? Because now, because it made it slightly more negative. So because it has a plus, it's like wanting to take more electrons from everything else, the neutral oxygen can act as a nucleophile now? Okay, I think you're on the right track there. The best way to phrase what, what I think you were thinking about was, by putting a positive charge here, we made this more electrophilic. Mm -hmm. That was the purpose of the acid. It may put a positive charge here, which made this more electrophilic, which made it easier for a nucleophile to attack. Because after all, we learned last semester that neutral oxygens are not very good nucleophiles. We learned that neutral oxygens, for example, are only good enough for SN1. They're not good enough for SN2. That is, they usually only attack something that already has a full positive charge. So we've got to put this full positive charge here on the molecule. Now, even though the positive charge is on the oxygen, it's really making the whole molecule more electrophilic. And it turns out that we're really attacking the carbon um, over here. Um, so it's the carbon that's the electrophile. That would be a mistake I think some people might make to think that this is the electrophile. But no, this is the electrophile down here. OK, so the oxygen um, came in. So the purpose of the protonation is to help out our weak nucleophile by making this more electrophilic. Now we get this product over here. All right, now who, do, who seems like the reactive atom in this product? Uh, the O and the plus. Yeah, anything with a charge is going to be unhappy. Um, so what we should be thinking is that nature wants to do something to get rid of this charge. Well, what could we do to get rid of that charge? Uh, 
deprotonation? Yeah, we could lose the proton. We can see that's the next step in the handout in parentheses again at the bottom of page one. The original nucleophilic atom is going to deprotonate. Um, so now we're going to uh, lose this proton. 